Praise the Lord. You've joined New Beginnings Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. We thank you for joining us for Bible study on tonight. We ask you to uplift the name of the Lord with us. We do not own the rights to this music. God, for you all being present with us on tonight. Yes. 
you have a as we have assembled assembled together for this this Bible study, trying to uh, trying to be prepared for the Lord's return. Because we know the Lord is soon to come. We know the Lord is soon to come. And uh, so we want to be ready. We thank God for each and every one of you that is present. That is present with us tonight. As we... Uh, Come to study the Word of God. We are still we are still in Timothy, uh, Second Timothy, Amen. Uh, the first chapter and the first verse tonight. We we'll read that. That's where our thought, our motivation is. Second Timothy one and one. Like I said, we thank God for each and every one of you. We know there is. Other places you could have been, but you have elected to worship with us tonight. And we appreciate that. We thank God for you. And we'll try to uh, say something tonight to encourage your heart and your mind. The Lord is soon to come. We got to get this thing together. We got to get our priority back. Got to get our focus back on the Lord's return. So tonight, we're going to pray. And then we're going to go to 2 Timothy. Uh, first chapter in the first verse. We bow heads. Gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thanking you, Lord God, for allowing us to enter into your presence. We thank you for giving us a mind to assemble together. Father God, you said with two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the Spirit of Christ tonight in our midst. We thank you. We pray you for all of your provisions, all that you have done, all that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for you have declared you have gone away to prepare a place that where you are, we may be also. And so we just thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. We ask that you would move in this place tonight according to your will. And we'll give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 says, and I'll be reading the King James Version tonight only. And the scripture says, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Our thought tonight is the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Now that word life is described as to live, to revive a uh, mode of living, way of life, state of existence, or being. And the other word we want to uh, define, or, yeah, the other word we want to define is promise. Promise is divine assurance. It is self-committal. It is word, the word, it is bond, it is agreement, it is covenant, it is oath, it is guarantee, it is uh, a declaration that something will or will not be done. Talking about promise and declaration that something will or will not be done. It is also as we would deal with it in this lesson, most, most importantly, we would deal with it as a uh, divine assurance and it's a promise. It's the promise of God, so it is uh, self-committed, committal. God God declared unto Abraham that he, since he couldn't swear on anything greater, he swore 
on himself. So uh, his 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 promise is uh is unchangeable. It's in, it's uh, uh immutable. He said it's immutable. It's unchangeable. So it so therefore it is a divine assurance, and it is a self-committal. It is he committing himself. Scripture, one scripture declared that he which has begun a good work in you, it is he that will perform it until the day of Christ. So we understand the promise is a, a, a bond, a promise is a guarantee. And so Paul is writing his second epistle to Timothy. Paul at this time is getting ready to to leave the scene. Paul knows that his time is up. He knows that he's never getting out of this dungeon. At this time, he's in this dungeon prison. He knows he's not, he's never getting out of there. He knows he, this is it. He knows he's out. So Paul is uh, sending this second epistle or the second letter to Timothy to encourage Timothy in in the faith, in Timothy's faith. In other words, in, in, to try to keep Timothy encouraged in his faith, in his faith. He's, and in this second epistle, he says things like, uh, he reminds Timothy of his faith, and he reminds Timothy of the faith that was in his grandmother, and the faith that was in his mother, and the faith that is in him. And so scriptures like that throughout the second epistle are to encourage uh, Timothy's faith. And uh, verse 6 and verse 7 of the same chapter, verse 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. Verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love in a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Scripture says God has not given Paul was telling Timothy that God has not given us the Spirit of fear. I know we always say, God ain't give you a spirit of fear. He has her. We always say a spirit of fear, but Paul is telling Timothy, God did not give you the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power, uh, love, and a sound mind. So hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Timothy uh, is facing a lot of uh, challenges, and so Paul is trying to just simply keep him encouraged. And uh, so that's what we're going to deal with tonight, understanding that in, in the second epistle, Paul writes to Timothy and tells him uh, things like perils of time. He said in the last days, he said, and Chapter 2, verse 1 says, Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And chapter 3, verse 1, Scripture says, This know also that in the last days perils, times shall come. So you have to understand in verse 4, uh, in chapter, I'm sorry, we have to understand it in, in second. Timothy, as Paul is getting ready to be poured out, Paul is getting ready to leave the scene, and he's aware of it. He knows it is his time to depart. So he's trying to keep Timothy, despite of all, all the struggles, the false teachers, and all the, the Antichrist, and, and all the things that Timothy is facing in Ephesus. Ephesus is a uh, uh, an adulterous town, I mean, idolatrous town, where they 
worship the, the goddess Diana and all kind of other idols. So he's trying to keep him encouraged in the faith, in the faith. And so what we have to <clears throat> grasp out of this tonight is that we must be encouraged in our faith despite what we're going through, despite all the false worshipers, despite all the false teaching, you and I, as Paul tells Timothy, we must hold on to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And verse 1 is where we, 2 Timothy 1 and 1 is where, in, Paul, in, in Paul's introduction, Paul says this, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and, you, and this is so very important for you and I to understand as modern day church. We're about to get off Paul and Timothy. We're dealing with the modern day church. This is so very important to understand. Paul is trying to get Timothy to know this is the will of God. Paul is saying, I'm, I, I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am a messenger, a servant of Jesus Christ. He said, by the will of God. And so, since it's by the will of God, the scripture says, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And so we have just uh, revealed that promise is a divine assurance. Since it's by the will of God, you have to understand that this is a divine assurance. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Since this is by the will of God, and since the promise of life is in Christ Jesus, we have to understand that God's will or God's word is bound. It's, it's bound. He's bound to his word. Self-committal. He's bound to his word. Uh, it's agreement. Okay, so let's get into the lesson because my time is going to run. Let's get in the lesson. As it is always, we try to run to the Old Testament, try to find a witness, because we are, as we know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, evermore. And so we're going to go to Deuteronomy. It's on the worksheet. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Yeah. And I'll be reading King James Version only tonight. You can follow whatever translation that you use. Uh, and it reads, verse 3 says, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Mm -hmm. The last part of that scripture says, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Understanding our thought tonight, the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. You and I have to understand that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Not meat and drink. And so the Lord took them, he, this is dealing with the children of Israel and we're aware of their uh, desert journey mm -hmm. as they, as the Lord delivered them from Egypt, the house of bondage, and as he was preparing them to go into the promised land, mm -hmm. he took them by, the scripture say, took them by way of the wilderness. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You and I go by way of the wilderness. We don't go by the way of glamour and glitter. You remember, the, you remember in, in the book of Matthew when John the Baptist baptized Jesus and the Bible said Jesus came 
straight way up out of the water. And that the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, descended from, from heaven in a bodily form or bodily shape as a dove. And it lightened upon him and landed upon him. And the Bible say, the fourth chapter goes on to say in Matthew, then was he led of the Spirit into the wilderness. We go by way of the wilderness. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Why do we go by way of the wilderness? He said, I humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee which thou knewest uh, with manna. Manna. What is manna? Manna is bread from heaven. Manna was bread from heaven. Boy, I'm about to get excited. I'm trying to maintain. <laughs> this, this is the Lord. This is the Lord delivering children of Israel. You have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, ever. He, he is still able, well able to deliver today. But you and I have to understand that men don't live by bread only. We live, oh my God. Men don't live by bread. This is what this is what he's trying to get Israel, children of Israel at that time to understand. He said, I, and I humbled thee, and I suffered thee to hunger, I, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee uh, know that man does not live by bread only. Okay. We don't live by bread only. The kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. We don't live by bread only. Oh, Paul is trying to get T uh, Timothy to understand you got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to understand. We have to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because according to the will of God, the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Here, in Deuteronomy here, he said, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. The Bible said no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So those of us that have the Holy Ghost, we know that the Lord, as the Lord delivered the children of Israel out of bondage, he can deliver you and I out of bondage. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Paul told Timothy, according to the will of God, the, the promise of life, which is in Christ, the promise. Now we are, we have determined that the promise, uh, we have determined that the promise is a, a divine assurance. It is self-committal. So whatever the word of God said, uh, the word is whatever the word of God says said, it has to come to pass. Mm -hmm. It has to come to pass. So we're gonna move on to the gospel, New, New Testament. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. What is life? Our description says life is the mode of living. Life is the way of life. It's the state of existing Life is to live. First John 1 and 4 says, In him was the life. In him was the life. In him was the mode of living. And the life, or the way of life, was the light of men. What is light? Light is an illumination. Light is light will reveal. It exposes. It reveals. Light is illumination. In other words, he is saying in him was the life. In him he uh, illuminated or 
he exposed or revealed mm -hmm. the manner of living or the mode of living or the state of existence or the way uh, we are to live. Because life is to live, it's also to revive. Those of us that have been regenerated, we are definitely at to revive. And we definitely have, he is definitely the light of men to the, regener to the regenerated because he shows us the mode of living, not only the mode of living, but the way of life. He would go on to say that he, Jesus will go on to say that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this is what Paul is confirming by instructing Timothy uh, to keep, to be encouraged in the faith. We have to maintain our faith. What is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hopeful, right. the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hopeful. What is, what is faith? Faith is expectation. Faith is hope. Mm -hmm. Faith is belief. This is what he's he, this is what he is saying. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. This is Jesus Christ. Because Paul told Timothy, according to the will of God, the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. The promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, John 10 and 10. John 10 and 10. The Gospel of John 10 and 10. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Abundantly. He said, The thief come not, cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's all Satan. That's all Satan comes to do. That's all Satan comes to do is to, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy your faith and my faith away from the promise of life. That's all, that's all he's trying to do. That <laughs> woo! Go back to creation. What did he do? He, he stole, he destroyed, he killed them from the what? Promise of life. That's all he that's all his job is. The problem is we get we get too dignified and too smart for our own good. Scripture tells us there's nothing new under the sun. But we we for some reason we always coming up with new stuff. Yeah, I don't know about that. You better you better you better check that. And if you don't and if you don't have anything exciting and anything new, then they probably won't come to your church. They probably won't log on, probably won't attend, because all you're gonna teach them is the word. Mm -hmm. Not gonna tickle the ear. But that's all Paul, that's all Paul told Timothy mm -hmm. is to uh he told him that that by the will of God. He said, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. So if the promise of life is in Christ Jesus, why would I preach and teach anything else? Why would you preach and teach anything else? Why would you accept All right. to be taught anything else? Paul said if he or an angel come from heaven and preach any other gospel, it's a curse. So why would you remain to sit in a ministry that does not teach and preach according to the will of God, which the promise of life is in Christ Jesus? Moving on. Don't, don't, don't answer me. Moving on. He said the enemy come not for nothing but to steal, kill, and to destroy. 
And just because he smiles and has a and is eloquent in speech, you can't you can't give him a pass. You gotta resist the devil. Scripture says resist the fear flee. Mm -hmm. All right, let us get let's let us deal with the saints now. Let us deal with the saints. Romans. Let us deal with the saints. Romans, fifth chapter, the 21st verse. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. This is what Paul is writing to the saints in Rome. He's telling them, look, that as sin had have reigned unto death, because the Bible tells you and I in the book of Romans, and I believe it's 13, 14, or 14, 13, it tells, it tells you that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You have to understand by the will of God, according to to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Romans 5 and 21 says that as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. The promise of life is in Jesus Christ. This is according to the will of God. Did you find that for me? Yeah, or 14, 13, or 13, 17, or 14, 17, <laughs> one of them. Uh, 14, 17. Yeah, 14, 17. Mm -hmm. Romans 14, 17. The wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. <laughs> According to Two, he said the great Romans 5 21 says grace reigns through righteousness the gift of God not only is the gift of God the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit but the gift of God is his love and unmerited favor it's his grace and grace reigns through righteousness the Bible said that uh, that uh, grace Rejoice over judgment. I believe it said grace rejoice. Grace and mercy rejoice over judgment. But I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, we're going to move on. 2 Corinthians 4 and 11. Still dealing with the saints. Still dealing with the saints. Still dealing with the saints. You and I have to understand according to the will of God. The promise of life is in Christ Jesus. It's not in any, it's not in anything else. It's in Christ Jesus. Promise is uh, uh, divine assurance. Promise is God's self-committal. He's committed to, he's committed to delivering us. When I say deliver us, I'm talking about Jesus Christ is soon to return. Right. And, and and take the church out of here. Total redemption. I'm talking about when I say deliverance, I'm talking about total redemption. That's all that's left. Is for us is for him to come back and possess his uh, purchased possession. All right. Total redemption. Uh, mm -hmm. second, Corinth, second Corinthians 4 and 11. This is what Paul is telling the church. This is, this is the last move for us to church. We are awaiting we are, uh, we are uh, awaiting his appearing. We are awaiting he's coming to get us. Yes. We cannot get sidetracked. We have to stay focused. 2 Corinthians 4 and 11 says, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. There you go. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. We're talking to the saints now. This is the church. This is you and I. 2 Corinthians 4, 11. Listen. He said, for we which live, for we which live are always delivered 
unto death for Jesus' sake. All right. Talking about your flesh. Mm -hmm. Just like he delivered his flesh. Just like he crucified his flesh. Talking about your flesh. Talking about my flesh. Our flesh must be mortified. Right. We are always being delivered from sin, from flesh. We're always being delivered in this, in this body for Jesus' sake. He said that the life, that the life, what is the life? The life is the mode of living. My life is the way of life or the state of existence that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. That the way of living, the mode of living, the, the, the state of existence, that it may also be manifested in our flesh, our mortal flesh. Mm. We have to understand that there is, there, there is, some writers say there is no other way. I know. There is no other way to live. This, the promise of life is in Christ Jesus. This is according to the will of God. He's the light of men. He's the light of men. He is, he said, I am the way. He's showing us how to live. Mm -hmm. We cannot have salvation any, but we cannot have salvation by any other means. The scripture just said the grace of God, it just said the, the, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> This is why it's so important to teach and preach the gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of it. He said, for there it, he said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all those that believe, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. He said, uh, but that's what he said. We're going to get off of that. <laughs> Second Corinthians, fifth chapter, 15th verse. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Uh oh. Oh, we're going to step on some toes on that. The promise is not in the promise is not in you. The promise is not in me. The promise is not in you. The promise is not in me. We can't make no, we can't make no cute way to live. Listen to what the scripture said again. And that he died for all. We have to understand, we have to understand most, most, most of the world, most of society, most of the world believe that because Jesus died that they are automatically saved, basically. And that is, if that's what your favorite bishop or your favorite pastor or minister, if that's what they teach, that's an erroneous doctrine. That's, that's an error. Jesus died. Jesus died to atone or to propitiate. In other words, to pay the price for sin. Because we couldn't pay. We couldn't pay for sin. So, and until, and until he died to pay the price for sin, you and I were separate from God. Just as, just as God, just as the Lord had put Adam and Eve out of the garden, out of his presence, until the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we were still out of the presence of God. We were still in a, we were still enmity enmity to God. We were still hostile or we still oppose God. This is why you have to understand why it's so important that the promise of life hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The promise of life which is in Jesus Christ. The scripture says uh, and that he died for all. He, he, he died for all versus uh you know, one particular nation, 
Israel or, or whoever, whomever. Amen. He died for all. He paid, in other words, in other words, he paid the price for all. Mm -hmm. He paid the price for all. Now those pastors and, and your favorite bishop and your favorite teacher that tells you to repeat the sinner's prayer and tells you to repeat after them, tell you to believe in your heart, and then after they conclude, they tell you that you're saved. That's erroneous doctrine. That's a false doctrine. That's a false teaching. In order for you and I to be saved, we must be born again. We must repent of our sins. Now we can repent of our sins because Jesus died for all. Understand how it goes. He, you, you and I are not automatically saved because he died. You and I can't just live, continue to live in sin because he died from sin. No. <laughs> no, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have to repent not only of our sins, but of our ways. We just read the scripture that said we can't even live unto ourselves anymore. But we still strive to do that. That's erroneous. That's error. We need to repent. We don't, uh, he said that he died for all mm -hmm. that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. What is, what is live? Mode of living? Way of life? State of existence? We're not to do that uh, as as unto our, ourselves. The scripture goes on to say, but unto him which died for them and rose again. He rose for our justification. Mm -hmm. Because if he if he would have just died, we wouldn't be justified. But because he rose, he rose for our justification. This is why it is so important. This is why the gospel is deemed the good news. This is why it's so important to teach and preach the good news because you can be saved. You can be delivered. You can be uh, have your sins remitted. This is why it's the good news. Prior to the gospel, prior to him dying for all, that was impossible. And it's not just automatic because he died. No, you have to repent. And you have to not live for yourself anymore. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Moving on. Uh, Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20. Uh, Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. This is the church. This is you and I directly. It, yeah, yeah this, yeah. this don't call for no deep revelation or none of that. Paul <laughs> is speaking plain. Yeah. I, just flat. yeah, I live in the flesh. You say, but not me. Christ lives. He said, nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. He said, and the life which I now live in the flesh, what is life? Life is mode of living, way of life, state of existence, being. It is to live. He said, the way I do all of that now, he said, is by the faith of the Son of God. Or he said, it's the Christ that is live in me. Mm -hmm. And the life which I now live in the flesh, he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, gave his life for me. Mm -hmm. The promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. We have to get a hold to that promise. Two more, two more scriptures. Excuse me, we're going to give you up. Philippians. Philippians, first chapter, verse 21. Philippians, first chapter, 
verse 21. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now I have a I have a I have a silly question. I'm gonna read the verse again. For me to live is Christ. For me, I'm sorry, for to me, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now, he said, for to me, in other words, that eliminates me, myself, and I. That was the question I was going to ask. So where does me, myself, and I fit in? It doesn't. He said, for to me to live. In other words, in order for me to live is Christ. <laughs> Not me, myself, and I. Wake up, somebody. The Lord is soon to come. And, 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 and despite all the stuff that's going on in the world, the enemy is still using all that to steal, kill, and destroy, to throw us off of our faith. The Lord said when, when the Lord, Scripture said when the Lord returns, Will he really find faith? Not talk, not yapping, not talking about it. Living it. I'm talking about the life, the promise of life, the mode of living, the way of life. You, you, these people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Ah, last one. I'll give you up. Second Timothy. 2.10 But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ who had 2 Timothy 2.10 Is that an error again? Oh boy. Second Timothy one ten. That's my bad. Second Timothy one ten. Amen. Second Timothy one ten. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. If, if, if I, ooh, I could spend an hour, I could spend an hour on that. If you just, if, if we just, if we, if we just go back to what we read in Deuteronomy, where he said he, he suffered these things and, and, and he Fed him and he committed these things, and uh, simply he said, and they didn't even know, they didn't know, neither did their fathers know. And he said, he he said he did that. I'm paraphrasing. He said he did that so they would understand. Man don't live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded. Um, what they say by. Man don't live by bread only, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. The Lord, this was the will of God before the church. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Before the church came into existence, before the death, burial, and resurrection, before the day of Pentecost, before the church came into existence, it was God's will then to let man know that we don't live by bread only, but we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Now, here what Paul is telling Timothy still, 2 Timothy 1 and 10, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, the appearing of our Savior. Now he's uh, the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So why would why would you have any other doctrine? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church people. Why would we follow any other doctrine when the Lord the Lord brought them out of the house of bondage? <laughs> And it was his intention way back then for them to understand they don't, you don't, you don't live by bread alone. He fed them. He, the scripture said he suffered them to hunger. In other words, in other words, they had ate and they was not hungry. But he suffered them to hunger. He permitted them to be hungry, to experience that, so he could feed them. All right. He said, I fed you with manners that you didn't know nothing about and your fathers didn't know nothing about it. He said, I'm, but I'm making you know, know it now so you will know that man don't live by bread only. Oh, I wish we could hear what the Spirit is saying to the church because we're trying to live by everything except the gospel. But as when it get good, it's time to go. <laughs> We 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 read the we 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 read these scriptures. We have read the Bible over and through time and time again. But it's something about the anointing that destroys the yoke. When the, when when we read it, when we read it with understanding and not skepticism. When we read it with with the intent. When we read it with the intent to be humble, like he said, I humbled you. We read it with the intent to be fed, like he said, I fed you. Amen. Mm -hmm. As it is always, uh, I encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Man, don't live by bread alone only, but by every word seated out of the mouth of the Lord. We must be born again of water and spirit, baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and filled with the Holy Ghost. It constitutes the new birth, the regeneration, mm -hmm. which, which makes you a member of the body of Christ. Christ is the head, we're the body. Jesus is soon to come. And so we pray that you receive something from the word on tonight. We're going to pray and give you up about it. It's the gracious of Heavenly Father and the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, your presence that we felt, your anointing, the Spirit suffering with us on tonight. We thank you. But we know that you didn't have to do it, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you for just being such an awesome God, for being the Lord of our life. We ask that you would look upon us, Lord, according to your will, according to our need. Lord God, bless us and keep us. Give us traveling grace. Take us from this place, but never from your presence. Assemble us together again at the point of time. And we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.